In this lesson, we'll look at using the div tag in HTML and IDs in style sheets to begin to change the appearance of our page and lay the foundation for formatting layout. And we can see from our previous work that we learned how to define a class as noted here in our style sheet declaration at the top of our file inside the head element as defined by this period followed by a name and a property value pair in our declaration block. And that is applied in our HTML by using the class attribute, both in this example on an EM tag on the word free, and on the span tag on the words truly remarkable. This lets us selectively apply formatting to elements on our page, as I can remove one of these attributes by selecting it and clicking delete, or even change the name of the tag on which the attribute is applied. As long as that tag is capable of receiving a class, that tag will apply that class to the selected text. And if I were to change this span tag to an EM tag, and change the closing tag to an EM tag, this class, red text, will be applied to the words truly remarkable, which I can see if I save my file from the file menu and select save and refresh my browser window. Now these are examples of selectively modifying elements on our page where we have multiple instances of an element that we wish to pass a value to by way of an attribute. But there are times when we only want to have a single instance of an element on our HTML page which has CSS formatting applied to it. Such a case would be when we want to apply layout to our document. In our work this far, we haven't really done any layout work. We've been learning how to create text in HTML and format that text. We're going to begin to look at layout. And one of the foundations of good design that we'll expand upon in our future work is using div tags combined with IDs in CSS to structure the layout of our page. What is an ID? An ID is a way as classes were a way in CSS that we can define CSS rules with the intention of those rules being applied to a single instance of an element on our HTML page. For example, when we look at our HTML page on the right hand side of our screen, we might decide that the main body of copy that's inside this page should be declared as a region because we may want to format other regions of our page such as a header or a footer or a left navigator, any type of element that you might like to have as a structure on your page. But how do we isolate the text which we see on the screen right now in its own region? We can do that by declaring an ID in our CSS rules. I'll come back over to my file hubble.htm and you can see in our previous work that we've been commenting our code as we start to write CSS. This is an excellent habit to get into, and I'll continue doing that right now in this lesson. I'll create a comment and type some text that helps me understand what I'm doing in my rules. And that text could read, IDs, layout, formatting. And I'll remember to close the comment so that I don't break any future code that I create. And I can see there's one orphaned comment up there from a previous lesson, which I'll go ahead and select with my mouse and delete from my keyboard. Now I'm going to start to build up an ID and I'm going to indent over several times using the tab key on my keyboard. And the syntax that will follow when declaring an ID in our CSS rules is to begin your ID name with the hash symbol or pound symbol followed by the name of the ID that you want to have, just as we did when we were working with classes. In this case, I'm going to name my ID main content. And then I'll begin my declaration block with a curly bracket, hit the return key on my keyboard a few times, tab over a few times with the tab key, and put a closing curly bracket. Now we can see on this HTML page that we have classes immediately above our IDs and just to remember just to highlight the point classes begin with a period IDs begin with the pound symbol so some simple formatting that I'd like to achieve with this main content ID 
is to format the background white. Now you might be saying the background already is white. Bear with me, you'll see where I'm going in just a moment. So first thing I'm going to do is tab over a few times and within the declaration block for this CSS ID, I'm going to use the property that will allow me to format background color, which is background dash color, followed by a colon, and then the value that I would like to apply to the background color. And again, from any graphics program, you can look up hexadecimal values for color or look them up on the internet. I just happen to know that pound FF 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 will give me white. Now if I save this work and refresh in the browser, nothing happens. Well, like with our classes, we have to associate our IDs with an element in our HTML for that ID to take effect. What we're going to do now is look at a new tag which we haven't seen before. This tag is frequently used to receive both formatting and layout instructions from CSS to format our HTML page. This tag is the div tag, D-I-V, and I'm going to put a div tag around all of the content of my page, which means that div tag will encompass everything within the body element. Now I'm adding a few returns here so you can see our body element contains an h1 element, a paragraph, an h2 element, and another paragraph element. I'm going to encompass these elements with a div tag, which is open caret, div, close caret. Likewise, at the bottom, before I forget, I'm going to type in a closing div tag. But as you probably expect, before this div tag will have any formatting effect on our page, we need to associate by using an attribute this ID which we just defined a moment ago with this new div element which we just created. And as you probably also guessed, the attribute that we want to use with this div tag is ID equals and then quote quote. This ID attribute which I'm highlighting in blue when populated between the quotes with the name of the ID that we just created, we'll link this div tag with this ID that we just created, allowing this div tag, which I'm highlighting in blue, to receive the formatting instructions that we put in our main content ID in our CSS rules at the top of the page. So, within this attribute, I'll type the name of our ID, which is main content and save my work by going file and save and as you'd expect if we refresh our browser we know our page is formatted correctly but we can't see anything the reason being the page is already white so to see our work look correct we need to change the background color of the page since we've seen that we can change the appearance of HTML tags let's change the appearance of the body tag itself since the body tag encompasses everything that is visible to the viewer, if we set the background color to black on the body tag, everything should appear with a black background, except any elements which have instructions to the contrary, such as the one we just created. So let's scroll back up to the top of our page. And let's add another selector rule. And I can see, just looking at my notes to myself, that we created in comments. Here I have a block for independent selectors for unique formatting versus grouped selectors which we learned about in a previous lesson. So I might say, oh, well, there's only one instance of the body tag. I'm not going to be grouping that with anything else. Maybe I'll put that CSS rule here. And I'll type a rule for formatting the body tag using the syntax which is probably becoming very familiar to you now. Typing the name of our selector which in this case is body, and within the curly brackets, the rule that will allow us to format the background color, which we just saw a moment ago, which in CSS is background dash color, followed by a colon, and then the hexadecimal value for black, which just so happens to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, followed by a semicolon. Now if we save our work, 
from the file menu, select save or command S, control S on the PC, switch over to your browser and reload. The page changes to black except the region that we identified with a div tag which has an attribute linking that div tag to our main content ID in our HTML page which has a background color set to white.